All right. Hey, what's going on? Um, yeah, my name is Zacchaeus Nifong. I've got uh, the owner of uh, Hooked Adventures here. He owns a adventure tour operation uh, that focuses on charter fishing, uh, mainly salmon and halibut and whale watching adventure tours in, uh, in Huna, Ketchikan and all over Southeast. Um, and then he also does like basic sightseeing and then water taxi services as well. So we're just going to, this is going to be the first of a series of, of blog posts of just informational videos. Um, I've got some experience in Alaska, you know, definitely not as much as, uh, as, as my friend here, Herminio Ramos. Um, some people call him Captain Herm. So what we're going to do is, is just every week we're going to be coming out with some videos for you guys. Um, that's just going to highlight different things about Southeast. If you're either going to go up there on your own and you're thinking about going as an independent traveler, or if you're going to go on a cruise ship and you're just looking for a little bit more information about kind of how to navigate through all the tour operators up there, what to look for. And so as these blogs kind of progress and as, as we go through this, um, this next month, the next four weeks, you'll just get more and more information. Um, this particular video um, and YouTube post is about how to watch humpback whales or other marine life in Southeast Alaska. So I'm going to be asking uh, Herm some questions and then uh, you guys can comment, like up the videos and uh, just make sure to share it. We'll try to keep it as concise as possible. So Herm, um, how you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. Sweet. Um, all right. So yeah, let's just go, go. Let's just dive right in, man. So um, what type of um, what type of camera when people are up there do you think people should be using to take pictures of whales? I mean, do, you, do they got to be a professional photographer? Are we talking like armchair, like anybody can take a good picture? What's your what's your take on like the type of camera people need to be using? Well, you know, nowadays that we have um, digital cameras and we've got SD cards, I think anybody can take a great picture, whether it be mm -hmm. Uh, with your telephone, uh, snap and shoot, a DSLR, you know, uh, one of them fancy, you know, $10,000 with a big telephoto lens. Um, definitely you're going to get some really, really up close, good pictures and detailed. But uh, I think, you know, the number one thing to get a photograph mm -hmm. is uh, to have patience. When I go out there and you're actually out there looking at them and, and regardless of what you're looking at, um, whether it be an eagle up in the tree or a whale in the water, um, just have some patience. You observe the animal, you know, you spend some time and, um, you know, animals out there, a lot of times there's, they're feeding. So there's a pattern to it. You'll see different indicators, um, you know, for, for your telephone. A lot of times I say for uh, moving animals, Put it on video and just be patient and just be ready. That's probably the most uh, important uh, factors is just to be ready and uh, and have the patience. And like I said earlier about digital cameras, mm -hmm. um, you can take a thousand photos. <laughs> Mo most people can just continuously shoot and still have room and then just go through all the pictures and pick out, you know, the five or six um that they like. I know for myself, I burn through a lot of photos and maybe pick out two mm -hmm. out of a hundred or more um, that I really like. Um, each camera that you spoke about earlier um, makes it a little bit easier. Snap and shoot, it's got that lag time. Um, tough to get uh, certain shots unless you time it yourself. The DSLRs, the higher end cameras, you know, you can you can get the shots and it's it's rapid fire you know shooting you you have those settings on the point and shoots where you can put it on sport mode um so you try to adjust and when i'm out there um as far as like lighting ap aperture things like that um unless you really know what you're doing let the camera do it for you and you just wait for the good shot i i try to um get the sun on our on our backs so we get as much light 
on the subject as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've seen better photos with people that have lower end cameras, but they were ready there for the shot. If you're not ready for the shot, you could have the most expensive camera. But if it's in the cabin and you're not shooting it, then you're not going to get the photo. Gotcha. So basically, I mean, one of the things that I, I did maybe that other people could, could use or whatever, but it doesn't actually work that way on, on this camera phone. But um, one of my favorite features, though, of like some Samsungs, and I don't know if Apple does it, but it's like you were saying, you can literally start just recording a video and there's a feature where you can just tap the phone and actually like take photos as the, uh, as the thing is actually recording a video. Like I always, I always used to kill that. I mean, and just to give people some background, um, I was up there with, uh, with Herm last summer and, uh, that's what I was doing. Like I was just recording cause I didn't know we were having to be patient on some of these whales and, I was just recording and then I was just tapping my phone. But, uh, and then there was a lot of people who had like the telescopic lens. They had like, you know, tons of gear and stuff. So I think, um, I think your point is, is just whatever gets you out there and whatever can just preserve that memory. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, anything amazing. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm picking up. Exactly, from you. exactly what I'm saying. And, and just being ready. Um, you can't take, uh, you can't take good photos out, from the windows so you know have a light jacket wear a sweater um, mm -hmm. it's not going to be the weather's not going to be so terrible where you're going to have to have full-on rain gear but um you're on the outdoors you're in alaska get outside you know don't shoot through a window that might have some salt water on it you know get outside uh, and participate in the outdoors that's mm -hmm. that's why people you know, go to Alaska in the first place is to experience it. And, and definitely it's not just the shooting. It's, you know, you, you, you'll, if you got audio on your camera and you're shooting the video, you, you're going to hear that, that noise they make when they expel, expel that water mm. uh, with that big flume that everybody sees on TV, you'll catch that. And, and it's, you know, it, it all adds to the experience. Totally. So, and then what about waterproofing stuff? Cause I mean, it rains a lot there. So what's your take on like a GoPro or like some kind of a waterproof camera? Do you think it's really necessary? You know, if a GoPro and Sony's got them, all kinds of companies, um, I do a jet ski tour. That's where I would recommend it. You're going to get wet. It's constant spray. Every time you move, you're going to get water on the boats. You know, not so much. If it's raining, just kind of cover it with your hand, take your shots, bring it back in, um, bring your uh, dust-free uh, wipes. I've got mm -hmm. some on board the boat. You know, keep your stuff nice and dry. What I tell people that if it's raining, um, I usually tell them to keep their cameras right inside the door so if something's happening that they can grab it real quick and uh, take the photos. Nice. Uh, but they really don't need um, – any kind of uh, waterproofing cases or anything like that. And the GoPros, um, unless you're doing some kind of action shots, you, you're, you're never going to get, you know, you're, it's going to be a black dot out there when you're looking at your video. So it's unless you're really close to the action, um, the GoPros, they're not going to work out for you. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then we're just, I'm kind of looking at some other pictures here. I mean, uh, other, uh, pictures, other questions. Um, so what type of whales and stuff can people expect to see? Like you're hailing out of Huna, which is, you know, really west of, of Juneau, kind of Southwest or whatever of Juneau. Um, tell me about the whales and stuff in the area. Well, you know, we're, we're, pretty fortunate in that area it's called icy Strait, and uh, right now even now i'm talking to some friends and there's feed coming in there there's herring um they're collecting eggs well those whales that aren't big enough are sexually mature to go to hawaii or mexico or any of the other places to um to breed they they're there right now feeding and uh, that area is just uh it's a it's an entryway. It's like an off-ramp into Southeast Icy Street. And um, 
the dominant whale that you can see as far as numbers is humpback whales. Um, you'll see some orcas traveling in and out of there, but they really don't hang out and stay. So if you're lucky enough and they're not, you know, technically they're not a whale. Um, I've been, I don't know, I probably got about a thousand or more three hour trips under my belt. And, you know, I've seen a winky, a, a winky, a minky, and I've seen uh, one fin whale and uh, a beluga on the outer coast, but in a gray whale. But the whales you're going to see there, they're going to be humpbacks. Gotcha. Unless you get really, really lucky. And like I said, um, the killer whales, um, they're pretty fun to watch. And you might see those too. Yeah. Yeah, killers, they are they're fun to watch too. Um, and then tell me about um, what's your take on is it dangerous? I mean, is it dangerous for the whales? I mean, I've heard of horror stories before where boat captains, they get too close to the whales and talk about, is it dangerous for both parties involved? Well, you know, and I'll kind of backtrack to your first question is that with the photographing, um, the whales, you know, they've done studies on it and I've watched them and that's my job and to observe and watch. And um, there's patterns and you know they're up there feeding and you just you just watch them respect uh, their space follow the guidelines and uh you know most everybody um their motors are on whether it be a propeller with the outboards an inboard with a prop underneath uh the the boat itself or uh jet boats that you see quite a bit now it's making noise you know, they can hear that that flap, flap, flap of the blades. They know you're there. As long as you don't race right up on them or try to um, um, impede their behavior. Like corner them, them or them, something. Yeah, let them feed. And I've seen that. I've seen uh, boats that were um, infringing on their little space to where they were trying to get the herring and the food that they were go going after. And I've seen them, you know, I'm not 100% because I'm not a, I don't understand whale, but they would take their tails out and they would smack it on the water and they call it tail lobbing. Mm -hmm. um, it's all theory on behaviors, but when you see a boat coming up like that and next thing you know, that's what happens next. Um, I'm guessing it's the whales trying to communicate, hey, uh, back off. I'm trying to herd up this these herring so I can eat. So yeah. you know, get off the dinner table. <laughs> yeah. Totally. But no, for, yeah, as far as like danger, no. Um, there's no whale that's going to – you see maybe you might see a video of a sailboat and a whale breaches or something. Wow, that is just like probably right up there with uh, winning the lottery as far yeah. as chances of that happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no lottery winners allowed on your boat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, not, not not when it comes to hitting whales. And um, uh, as I said earlier too, with like the jet skis, um, it I I ran out the jet skis, but even those jets, it sounds if you put a hydrophone down, it sounds like a, a river, a moving mm -hmm. river underwater, mm -hmm. and uh, those whales pick up on that. And if you just respect their space. If they do look like they're moving in into an area, and you do see some bubbling or something, you know, give them some room. They they they're just trying to get some fat on them because they got to travel, and you know that's the only time that they eat. And if they got to go to Hawaii or Mexico, um, that's a lot of fat stores that they need to make up to make those journeys to Hawaii and Mexico because they don't eat down there. You know, it's like a desert, so mm -hmm. it's like a it's like a living hibernation. Uh, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. as far as like eating. What, uh, and then you said something about the bubbles and stuff. Um, how is that one way to tell that they're about to start feeding or what do you look for when you're trying to figure out? Um, when you go out there on the water and you're looking around and you see something that just isn't, you know, doesn't just looks different. Um, I, have, I tell people that all the time. If you look out in the water and you see something that doesn't look quite right or just looks different, let me know and maybe something's going on. Those um, humpback whales do bubble feeding, and that's definitely 
a clear indication of behavior and if you time it right you can actually get some really good shots because you'll actually see uh, bubbles I've watched um, a bubble trail and I was out there watching and the other boats didn't see it but I could see every once in a while I'd see like a couple little bubbles and I'm a diver and I know that when I exhale you know I'm pu pushing out bubbles pushing mm -hmm. out oxygen the only thing down there that's doing that's going to be those whales especially if I'm sitting there watching them and so I, you don't get a precise um, bearing on them but you know you 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 get a pretty good indication on where they're going to be hanging out so then you can position you know then I look at the light for photos and everything and um, mm -hmm. f you know feed it's like any other um, animal out there whether it be the wildebeest in Africa it's like um, you want to go find predators well go find what they're eating on <laughs> right follow them and then you're gonna f you know you're gonna get the other animals Herring is is a is a big enough fish where it's visible. Krill, mm -hmm. you really got to get up high. It's got to be a cer certain lighting to where you'll see dark patches in the water mm -hmm. and they're moving. And you're thinking, okay, that's little krill. But mm -hmm. with herring, you know they're shiny. They're about mm -hmm. eight inches or more. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a lot more movement and a lot easier to see. Birds, um, just like fishermen on the east coast when they're looking to fish they're looking to where the birds are coming down and picking uh, all good indicators of, gotcha. uh, what kind of behavior to expect okay and then the last question is uh, the last question is what are maybe some other animals that people might I mean because everybody's like okay I want to go whale watching but everybody hopes to see other things like when they're on a whale watching tour so what are some other things that they would probably see on a whale watching uh, sightseeing expedition in, in Southeast Alaska? Well, I've worked for quite a few companies and there's some out there that, you know, I've learned from. And um, I, when I go out there, um, I try to go and see some of the birds, not just the bald eagle, which everybody's going to see. Um, whether they're on their cruise ship or walking around town, they're probably going to see a bald eagle. Um, when they go and take the trip, some people are really excited, some people aren't. But I like to go and, and get them in, in a more natural setting. So there's bald eagles, there's a lot of uh, sea-faring birds, oyster catchers, um, scoters, all really um, uh, neat-looking individual birds that are mm -hmm. really easy to spot out because of the plumage. And then um, we get... Uh, out there, we're closer to the outer coast. Um, you get a lot of uh, otters that raft up. Those guys, I mean, you know, it's a postcard with them on their backs, and they maybe have their baby, or they got some crab or something, and they're eating. It's, it's, you know, it's postcard. So you have a chance to see those. Then you got doll porpoise. They resemble killer whales, but they're about six foot long, and um, they're porpoise. Mm -hmm. Adult porpoise, uh, gray porpoise. You get seals. Um, another one um, that's really it's pretty entertaining because they're real vocal. If they're up on uh, buoys or on land on rocks, are uh, the stellar sea lions. Uh, they sound like dogs kind of when they bark. Their males are like 1,200 pounds. The um, pups are real curious and they're like dogs or puppies. If you get a boat, some of them come right up to the boat and are real curious. Uh, those are great to watch. Um, and then maybe some you don't see in the water, but you go cruise the shorelines and see, you know, maybe a bear, a brown bear, a black bear, depending on what area you're at, and uh, our deer, which um, is a black black tail. tail. Yeah. yeah. So there's and a lot then of wolves there's too. I think, if I'm not mistaken, you've you've encountered some gray wolves and stuff like on the shoreline. Well, yeah, and that's farther up into uh, um, Glacier Bay. Just really depending on on your on the area you're at. I know I've worked in Ketchikan, Juneau, um, a little bit in Sitka, a little bit in Skagway, but uh, you know, certain time of year, real great Ketchikan to go see orca. Uh, not mm -hmm. good for fishing. Um, Juno, Huna, 
um, really those are the places to go for uh, whale watching. The only difference with Juno and Huna is uh, boat traffic. You'll see maybe a handful of boats in Juno or uh, in Huna. Mm -hmm. You'll see, you know, traffic jams wow. in uh, Juno. So, depending on where you're at, a lot of cool stuff to see. And you're only there for uh, you know a certain amount of time. Um, so I just you know whatever the folks kind of want to see, and that's what I, I wow. kind of focus on. But the humpbacks are the real show show getters. Gotcha. All right, well, sweet. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. And uh, yeah, we'll just, this is just some in, informative type stuff for the public. And uh, like Herm is down in uh, in Nevada right now, and um, I'm down in Arizona. So we're just uh, kind of wintering over. And uh, Herm is going to be, Captain Herm is going to be going back up here in the next like month or so. So we're just um, putting out these videos for the public, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy them. And if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them in the uh, in the comments below, and um, just make sure to subscribe to to Hooked Adventures, and and we'll keep putting out good content. If you guys have any suggestions, or you want to know about something, or maybe want us to make a video about something else, uh, feel free to to let us know, and and we'll take it from there. So, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.